and welcome back to Cooking with Chef Spence, I guess, right? Um, uh, today I am going to prepare some beignets, and beignets is like the um, uh, the fried donut of uh, Louisiana. You know, it, it has a special place in New Orleans, and uh, you can get beignets from any place you want it to, but from New Orleans, it's something magical about what happens to that beignet when it's fried in New Orleans, okay? So, um, and you can make some exceptions here because I'm not in New Orleans, but I'm still gonna make some uh, beignets for you. So, um, growing up, we did not have beignets, but we knew everything there was about Helms Bakery Donuts and the Donut Man driving down the street on 49th Street. We could hear him coming a block away, and my sister and brother and I, we would raid my mother's purse, who was not home at the time, just to have enough change, and maybe it couldn't have been more than 15 cents to, to a quarter to buy a glazed donut or a twist or a jelly donut. Oh my word, that was like the best. But I do enjoy uh, beignets, Cafe Du Monde, uh, Cafe Beignet. There's a couple of great places in New Orleans that are known for their beignets. And pretty much what it is is a fried donut. And uh, there's history behind it. And that history uh, comes in the form of a, a fried uh, piece of dough that may or may not have uh, any sugar in it, but it's dusty with a lot of sugar. And there are two classic forms of what a beignet is. One is based off of Atashu, which is the same dough that we use to make cream puffs and eclairs, except for the fact that it's fried. And then the other form is a yeast form, which is the one that I'm going to do for you. So it's a very moist dough. And with uh, the one that I'm doing, it's raised uh, as we fry it in the oven. It puffs up like very, very quickly uh, from the yeast. The ga those gases is what makes it rise. With the other one, with the um, had a shoe based beignet, it's risen because of all the steam that's inside because there's lots of moisture inside of that product. So um, I'm just going to be showing you the beignet form. So in a bowl, I already put some yeast together with my water and um, I used um, um, the regular old instant yeast. So you really don't have to use lukewarm water, but if you are using active dry yeast, you need to allow that yeast to sit in a bowl for about five minutes with lukewarm water. Right? And I have egg, sugar, a small amount of heavy cream, a little bit of butter, salt to enhance the flavor, and I'm going to be using bread flour. Now there is, um, the bread flour is going to be our, uh, what we consider our variation or a variant, meaning I might not use all of uh, the bread flour that's there, or I might use a little bit of additional bread flour. You could substitute with all purpose, but I would not go with the softer flour than that because we want it to hold up um, as a prize, otherwise it might fall apart. Also, we have to knead this dough so that it doesn't fall apart uh, later when it's fried. Um, this dough tends to be a little bit more on the sticky side, so don't add too much flour to the product. All right? So, I'm going to add my egg, sugar, and give it a whisk. My butter is softened, and you could uh, not maybe melt it um, or heat it up excessively, but um, I would be okay if you uh, just get, gave it a little nook, nook, nook in the uh, microwave just to soften it up a bit more, almost melt it, okay? Makes it easy to um, incorporate once your uh, flour goes inside. 
Now, my e uh, notice that I had not put the yeast in. Uh, we don't put the yeast, the salt in. When salt comes in direct contact with yeast, it weakens the yeast, it might even kill the yeast. So I put a few items that I consider to be my buffer, and then I go ahead and add my salt. So break up my butter a little bit, mix my cream, add my salt, and now, not with the whisk, but with a spatula or a spoon, um, I'm gonna use a wooden spoon. You can even do this inside of your mixer with a dough hook or a paddle, and I'm gonna to begin to incorporate my flour. This uh, particular little treat, it's so addictive. Um, they consider it a breakfast treat. Now, I'm not sure what is so nutritious about this being a, uh, a breakfast treat with some uh, good coffee, chicory coffee, but uh, by no stretch of the imagination is it nutritious. I mean, if you want to, I guess you could make this with um, a gluten-free flour, uh, but show me a nutritious beignet and then show me uh, some people that are going to say, oh my god, I just love it. No, it's got to be deep fried. It's got to have some, you know, butter and some sugar and all that good stuff, especially the powdered sugar in the end. Come on. So I'm going to turn this out onto the table and knead it so that um, I can get my hands into it and develop the gluten that is in this dough here. So while I am kneading, which is to some degree, semi-therapeutic. Um, one treat that I did have a lot of, and that was um, pralines, which is another New Orleans favorite. So my grandmother would come and visit with us. Uh, my grandmother, too, from New Orleans, um, she lived in New York and then she would visit with us and um, she always, always, always made lots of different desserts for us. She would make um, fried bananas or plantains and she would roast them sometime in the, or, or broil them in the oven. And she would make chocolate cream pie and she also made lemon pie and she made pralines and I remember them being in a skillet, uh, a black skillet. She would pour them in there and then she would sit on my bed with me and tell me all sorts of stories in French or patois and oh my gosh my memories of my grandmother uh, chatting with me and sharing stories and those wonderful pralines, I will never, ever forget, and I will always, always cherish them. Her name uh, is Rita, and uh, while she may not be with us in her physical presence, uh, she's definitely with me spiritually. So you can see it's slightly tacky, um, and you know, there's butter in here, there's uh, sugar in here, and um, what else? Heavy cream, so it's got every reason to be, to some degree, a little tacky. So we're gonna give this a good kneading for about 10 minutes. And from time to time, I might add a tad bit of flour to the surface so that it doesn't 
come off in my hand. So when I say tacky, it should not come onto your uh, fingers. You should be able to touch into the dough and, and then not have any pull um, away onto your hands. So from time to time, if you are doing this by hand, just rub a little flour between your fingers, between your hands, and remove the excess uh, dough. Okay, and then get back to work. It's a labor of love. And if it were anything less than that, you wouldn't enjoy it. So there's a lot behind uh, what goes in to the food that we eat. And especially when there is wonderful stories behind them, it just makes it more enjoyable. I'm also working out. This is, <laughs> I'm working my COVID arms out because I'm hiding, you know, happily hiding like what is underneath uh, this chef jacket. So, you know, it's it's been a little bit of a interesting year. And uh, with that year, unfortunately, came um, some poundage, like 19 pounds to be exact. So that's good right there. Um, you can do a little spring back test and um, to test your dough and make sure that it is what it is. For those of you that know me and know the kitchens here, Chef Bashan uh, was making faces at me just a moment ago. So I just do a little spring back test. I will tighten up the dough in a round like this and then the dough will kind of spring back, indicating to me that the gluten has been developed. And now I can put this into a bowl and cover it with plastic wrap. And you can uh, butter the bowl just a tad bit. Pour a lot. And then let it almost double up in volume. You could also put that in the re uh, this in the refrigerator uh, until later, because when you are excuse me when you are um, preparing a dinner, let's say, and you want to serve beignets, it's probably not something you want to try to make at the last minute. So it's fine if it sits in the refrigerator, and then you can take it out later. And uh, from there, you can roll it out and fry it. So it is best served super warm. When it comes out the fryer, that's when we enjoy um, our beignets. So I have my dough here, and I'll use a little bit of flour to roll it out. Just enough flour, not too, too much. And I'm going to kind of square it off a little bit because eventually I'm going to cut it into little off shaped um, squares. They don't have to be perfect. And you want to roll this out rather thin between one eighth and a quarter of an inch in thickness. likelihood is that it will probably be a little bit doughy uh, inside um, once it's fried. And ideally they should be a nice golden brown, but if they're too thick, they'll be more golden brown by the, or burned by the time the interior is cooked. So I do have 
uh, some hot oil on the stove top for these to be deep fried. You'll want to have some type of skimmer or a slotted spoon to remove your beignets. I also have a paper towel lined pan to remove my beignets when they're done. Uh, I'm going to use a pizza wheel to cut them and you could use a uh, knife uh, to do the same thing but this one works really easily so I'm just going to make a couple of strips I usually do a tester, uh, so I'm going to take a piece and I'm going to see how it does in the uh, fryer and determine if I need to make an adjustment. And I can tell right away by how it's risen that I'm close, however, I think it needs just a little bit more heat. And if that's the case, that's going to take just a few moments, and I'll probably have to tell you some additional stories. <laughs> but I'm oftentimes very entertaining, so that will work. So you can see right now, it should have already browned, and it's not doing that, so I need to adjust my heat, which I already did. down the temperature. Uh, they're all, you know, the product, uh, they're all fighting for some of that hot oil to function, and they can't function properly if uh, there's too many in them. So it will reduce the temperature. So we're not quite ready here yet, so I'm just going to allow uh, the fryer to just get a little bit uh, more warm. Uh, I have seen some interesting beignets uh, in my research. Uh, some are filled with uh, yummy cream cheese fillings uh, and uh, like a fritter. And the translation of a beignet actually is a fritter. And fritters can be filled with fruit, cream cheese, and that kind of thing. And then during Mardi Gras, uh, you will see them striped with purple and gold and green, uh, kind of mimicking even the, um, uh, the cake, the, help me out here, the, uh, the king's cake, uh, which is very traditional around uh, this time of year. So uh, I'm going to try another one and see if I got this too. Come on, come on, do your thing, do your magic. I just need some uh, music to go along with this. Uh, like, don't mess with my tune too. It's one of the, one of those songs that comes to mind uh, when uh, I'm doing second line with umbrellas. So it's there. I think it's just about there now. So it's puffed up nicely. Woo! So I'm going to start to drop a few in there. Now, 
flipping these over. So that's a nice browning on there. Um, when I'm at home, I usually will toss these after I drain, you know, have them all hot and ready. I will drop them into a paper bag filled with powdered sugar and, uh, and then shake the bag up so that they get lots of powdered sugar. Um, you can approximately choke yourself on the powdered sugar. So take a little bite when you first uh, attempt to enjoy them. And they stack them on a plate, you know, uh, sort of like a pyramid. And uh, oh my gosh. one of those treats that uh, there's nothing like having like that open concept uh, sort of kitchen and living space so that everyone can be a part of the process. Everyone waits very anxiously, you know, around the stove top as these are big, uh, uh, frying uh, so that they can have them right out of the fryer. I think we're on to something now, so they're going a little bit faster now. You can count on everyone probably having three uh, of these. Uh, if you want to do some math and determine how many guests you can serve uh, right now, uh, you do have a limit. Most of us have a limit how many people we can have in our home at a party. Uh, so you might have to, uh, I don't know, maybe it's a, it's a good thing that you might have to wait before you have to make a lot of these. By then you will have mastered it, so you could maybe, you know, make a huge batch. And your timing will be great.
and they're very hot, so use uh, maybe a pair of, um, of tongs or flip them over with the spoon. So get them flipped over quickly. That's why the bat, paper bag works so well. And just like that, we have some beignets. And let's see. Oh, look at that. Those are yummy. So, and those are beignets. I hope you enjoy them, and I hope you make them soon. Look at the times are old.